were at the Slender Estate in West Sussex. About 100 years ago, most of this area was all trees, and for the last eight years, the National Trust has been working hard to restore it. So today, we're going on a walk with a very special guest who understands more than anybody almost about the very special connections between people, nature, and woodlands. Hello, uh, John, how are you? I'm all right, thank I'll, you. I'll how are you? Yeah, the old elbow, elbow nudge. Thing. I'm in second heaven. I'm, of course, woodland is my thing. Look at this beautiful oak tree and wonderful holly. But I've been looking around and... Um, what have you found? Well, I found all sorts of things. You see here, this is where a, a, a deer has couched, yeah. which you know, is rested here. Its rear end was here. Its head was here. And uh, this is where the feet were, were tucked up. And from the shape, I can say that this is a doe. Now, this is one of my favourite trees, the lime tree. This is a real friend. I love to hug trees. I don't mind. To me, these are they're living things. Yeah. And they're sentient. They move their leaves to the sun. They do. They just move very, very slowly. This was so important to our ancestors. The, these were the lettuce of the forest. Yeah. Even now, yeah. which is late in the air, it's still edible. Yeah. But this tree had so many uses. The bark makes wonderful rope. Yeah. It's quite possible that Stonehenge was erected with ropes wow. made of lime yeah. tree. Yeah. Our ancestors were good observers, and they, this was everything to them. This was their yeah. pharmacy, their yeah. hardware store, their food store. There's nothing here they wouldn't have known about. I'm sure of that. So this is a tree planting area that uh, I've brought you to, Ray, which is an area which uh, we're re-establishing with trees, uh, and uh, we've got three trees here to, to pop in today. We've got a field maple, an oak, and uh, a hazel, and they'll all require slightly different uh, conditions to, to thrive in, but it's really important that we do put the right trees um, where they're going to stand the best chance of surviving and also the trees that we think will do the best jobs that we want them to do and in this case it's really providing fantastic habitats for, for nature. So what we'll need to do, just put the tree down there for a second, just out of the way, we'll have to create a nice sort of space that so, need to be able to be, uh, have some space for each roots to grow a little bit. Some people just cut a T shape. They would do, and you can get different sort of trees that we plant, and this one's in a little pot, so it's got a little soil plug that you need to have space for those roots to, to grow out of. But a lot of the trees that we plant there, they're called bare root trees, yes. so they come just with the roots. And you only, as you say, just need to plant a slot for that. So I'm thinking maybe we'll use these brambles to provide it with some extra protection. Yeah, no, absolutely. Obviously we have to protect our trees from things that might want to eat them. And so we do use tree guards where we have to. We're doing lots of work and using different materials, anything from cardboard to wool. But in the ideal situation would be to actually not use tree guards at all and to find try to find ways where we can establish trees without the need to protect them. What about the hazel? We're near some hazel, so that's a good indication we're in the right sort of place. Yeah, exactly. Over the First, uh, the first World War and the Second World War, tree cover across the UK dropped to you know, historically low levels and the woodlands that would have existed here for millennia disappeared during that time. So the guys at Slindon here have been restoring those to uh, you know, a much more sort of normal level of woodland cover that we'd expect to see. Um, the work that they're doing here really is ahead of its time using natural regeneration, using planting, creating wood pasture and really serves an example uh, for all of us to learn from in thinking about how we might establish our woodlands going forward. So this is our last tree ray, it's an oak tree which is a really important tree for obviously for the National Trust as it sits on our emblem. Um, nice open space with lots of sunshine so I'll certainly like it I think. So if we could get every, if everybody in the country was to plant one tree, think how many trees we would put back. Wouldn't take long, would it? It certainly wouldn't. So there's lots of things we can all do to help nature. You could plant a tree in your garden. You could put flowers on your windowsill for insects to use for, for nectar. Or if you haven't got space in your own garden, you could donate to us by giving to our plant a tree fund and we can do something on your behalf. But of course, we don't always need to do this and sometimes nature can do it for us. So um, why don't we go and have a look at one of those areas just now? That sounds perfect. So Ray, I've brought you to an area of uh, natural regeneration uh, rather than planting to just show you the differences between yeah. uh, what we've done here and what we do in other places. This, this is what really excites me is that as soon as you see natural regeneration, you see something completely different. Obviously this woodland's been protected from 
browsing attention yep. of deer. So it's got away really fast. I mean, look at the amount of life that's here. So this is an arable field uh, just about over eight years ago, uh, which we then enclosed and uh, let nature do its work. Can you do this everywhere? Uh, not, not everywhere. Uh, we can use it in a lot of places. And we're lucky here, if we looked around us, we can see that there's woodland surrounding us, which we can use as a natural seed source for these woodlands to expand. But in other places where there's really no history of tree cover or no adjacent seed sources for, for very big distances, we might need to do some, some work to help that along its way. But it's never a binary choice we don't have to just either plant or allow for natural regeneration we can do a, a blend of those things that's the secret is learning to work in harmony with nature indeed yeah so ray thank you so much for coming today it's been a fantastic time uh, spent with you i felt it's really instructional and informative and i've, I've loved every minute so thank you oh it's been a privilege i mean to be out in the woodland in britain well that's fantastic but also to be in your company and to see the forest through your eyes as a professional forester that's been incredibly informative i'd really like to take this opportunity to thank our volunteers our members our visitors and all those that support us it's only with your help and uh, support that places like northwood that we're planting and regenerating here could survive and we can look after them for the long term so thank you for all of that mm -hmm.